Okay, good afternoon. Welcome again uh, to this uh, particular program. See, here we deal with basically what are the parameters, what to require to look at for getting the performance evaluation of machine tool or compare the evaluation performance of two or three different makes and models. And uh, what are parameters and how do we measure? What are the conditions for measurement? And also what are the statutory standards available as and today to measure these parameters and what are the equipment? We configured the program like that, just introduction about machine tool testing, their standard. Then my colleagues will take over the laser calibration, valve bar measurement, vibration measurement, and truth cause analysis for uh, gearboxes. Then coming back to thermal analysis, static analysis, like that. There are so many parameters we test for machine tools. So that will come back in the course one by one. What I mean to say is when you design a machine tool or when you want to use a machine tool, you should know how it performs. To check the performance, you have to have some comparative results to compared to conditions you have to have. So that is where we are trying to introduce you, trying to tell you how machine tools are tested and how they are compared with respect to the performance of different parameters. That is just introduction. Coming back to my next slide, here it is machine tool testing and calibration. There is a difference between testing and calibration. Calibration means I measure the values and correct it whatever possible way. But whereas testing, I generate the data on the machine for different conditions and different parameters. What is output? How is it going to affect your accuracy of the component produced? Okay, it's random and the different, but otherwise, some tests are common for the activities. Now, next is the modern production. We have a lot of demands, such as higher tolerance and tighter geometrical form errors and the shorter production times and reliable process, which are influenced by machine performance and your ambient conditions, and also the process of your compound manufacturing. So here we are trying to tell one by one which will affect what. So coming back to it, if you see this slide, there are so many machines seen from outside. Everything looks same. But when you check the performance, they are not same. That is their capability or credibility of the machine or design or manufacturer or brand names. So what we look here is to compare this performance, what are things we see? So that means what I mean is by outside looking, you cannot say how it performs. The technology under the screen is entirely different for different models, different manufacturers, different machines. Okay. Now coming back to here, the accuracy of precision of machine tool is generally influenced by its precision. That means basically what you require on the compound precision, that is size, form, and finish. That is affected by four major parameters. One is static rigidity, static performance of the machine, other one is dynamic performance of the machine. A third one, thermal stability of the machine, thermal performance. Next, how do you build the machine? These are the four major parameters which affect the component precision, what you get output. Now, the component quality, as we see here, it depends on compound. What is compound quality by size, form, and finish? There are three major parameters what you see on the component. See, the size depends on thermal and dependability of the machine. They are again interdependent by spindle, axis, other things. Then come back to form accuracies, geometric of the machine and the stiffness of the machine and dynamics of the machine will affect the form accuracies. And these parameters depend on the axis responsibilities, response, and the alignments, kinematic accuracy, and loop, loop elements, work wheel loop elements like stiffness and other things. The topic of the, I'm starting you know, with the, the measurement of static error and dynamic responses of uh, in linear motion of axis. Static errors in linear motion of axis. A typical linear uh, linear carriage exhibits a six error motion motions associated with its uh, normal movement of axis. One is linear displacement error. That's a, a positioning error or a positioning error in the direction of movement. And two straightness error associated uh, with the perpendicular to uh, to the movement of axis. And three angular errors, which are Pith, ya, and roll, which are rotation around, around the three orthogonal axes. So now we are going to discuss about static rigidity. As a machine tool user, uh, your main intention is to improve the productivity. But how you will improve your productivity? Okay, before going to static rigidity, we need to, if you want to understand static rigidity, you need to get an answer for all these three questions. What is static rigidity? Why we need to measure static rigidity? And how to measure static rigidity? Okay, as a machine tool user, your main intention is, is intention is to improve the productivity. But how you will improve your productivity? Either way, you can do you can uh, reduce your tool changing time. 
other what other way we can do you can increase your material removal rate but how you will improve your material removal rate you can increase by increasing the depth of cut or speed rate in that time directly you are increasing the load applied to your spindle and axis whether your spindle is capable of taking that load or not we don't know but we need to find that how you will find that what is the capacity of your spindle how much load it can withstand the finding is called static rigidity okay static rigidity is the estimation of load carrying capacity of the sub system that means how much your spindle is having the capacity up to how much load it can withstand how much depth of cut you can go for that we can decide by using static rigidity sometimes your spindle may be having more rigid more rigidity but your axis will not be having rigid enough that time what will happen your tool will get deflected if you are using a turning machine if your spindle is very rigid but your axis system is not very rigid that time what will happen your spindle will not get deflected but because of the load cutting load your axis will get deflected so we need to consider both wear spindle rigidity and axis rigidity and both relative rigidity also we need to consider so we are going to measure the static rigidity with respect to asme standard asme v 5.54 we are using for machining center and v asme v 5.57 for turning machine now i am going to take you into the vibration related part that is the dynamic uh, accuracy of the machine so basically to start with from basic so uh, this is the content of this particular first session i will be covering this vibration in three parts one is a spindle vibration and balancing how to do the balancing to reduce the vibrations then uh, there is a small demo on the vibration how we are doing and there is a next part of my lecture will be specific to a gearbox so on the gearbox how to do a vibration analysis and how to uh, find the faults on the gearbox then third will be on a little more advanced which covers the natural frequency part of the machine basics of vibration so first vibration means what what is a, what we are calling it as a vibration basically if you you may be uh, uh, seeing a measuring run out on your machines whether you are a user or you are a uh, manufacturer of a machine tool the basic thing a basic test what you check is on the machine is the run out so you may have observed when you are measuring a run out you can you will be always seeing the uh, dial reading going positive to negative in a sinusoidal way so this sinusoidal way of uh, deflection whatever we are uh, measuring suppose the number of complete cycles in one second so that we call as frequency and uh, this amplitude say for example if it is going between Uh, minus 10 micron to plus 10 micron, so the 20 micron is my amplitude. So that is what basically we call as a amplitude in case of a runout measurement. So now this runout is a displacement, but what we are measuring is the acceleration and the vibration velocity. So these three are all interrelated. So velocity, vibration, velocity. What we are measuring is nothing but it is in. Uh, it is a differentiated value of displacement that is dx by dt and uh, again if you differentiate the velocity you will get the acceleration so now whatever we are measuring is the vibration velocity or vibration acceleration depends on the kind of machinery what we are measuring we will go with a different parameter normally for our machine tool application we uh, don't measure displacement as a vibration entity Uh, only we will be usually measuring velocity and acceleration because because our machines are of higher speeds and uh, higher frequency vibrations will be coming so we will be going with the velocity and acceleration so this uh, chart gives you the some specific cases where which uh, particular unit is measured so spindle vibration measurement so there are many people they just uh, place the vibration sensor near the motor or near the spindle somewhere they will place at some particular angle and they measure but what is the standard practice what is the standard say what, where to measure how much vibration to allow and uh, how to uh, uh, avoid those uh, resonance the resonance part i will be coming to the further uh, deeper so these uh, spindle vibration how to measure so basically the spindle as of earlier days there were no specific vibration standards for machine tool spindles so there are uh, 
standards as a general vibration of mechanical rotating elements 10816 uh, standard series where there that people were uh, used to follow for even for machine tool so in recent times uh, there are a lot of uh, improvisation in the standarding committee also now we have a specific for machine tool we have standards even if you see this part 3 gear driven spindle standard was released very recently on 2020 so these uh, standards uh this uh, iso 17243 tr is a technical report so 17243 what we are uh, that particular standard says about how to evaluate the machine tool spindle vibration so spindle vibration where to measure how to measure what to measure all those things are covered on that that i am going to explain to you yeah so now we are going to discuss about the thermal issue most of you people might have faced this Uh, you will be telling that the morning i am getting good accuracy but it is not coming in the evening but if you check all the elements all the parts everything will be in good condition only even though you will not be getting the same accuracy in the evening why it is happening it is the behavior of the machine because of the heat generated by, by the machine thermal expansion will happen so that will disturb your component accuracy we will discuss about this is elaborately in next slide okay so if you are not getting the component accuracy that could be because of these many issues if your spindle running accuracy is not good then you will not be getting the good circularity and you will not be getting the good roughness then that time what you will do you need to improve your spindle build quality you need to change the bearings and you need to do condition monitoring regularly then you can improve your spindle running accuracy linear axis accuracy is not good like yesterday we explained if your positioning accuracy is not good if your squareness is not good then also you will not get the good component accuracy suppose if you are, if you are getting a morning you are uh, getting good finish and not good finish morning you are not getting good uh, this one within the tolerance you are getting the job evening the tolerance is not maintaining then what is the problem that is because of the thermal behavior because morning your uh, accuracy everything is good but it is not maintaining throughout the day that is because your thermal behavior all the machines will be having a uh, one uh, warm up program but most of the user will not be using that what is that warm up program what is the use of that that i will cover in the upcoming slides so you can see here all the material will be uh, if you, if there is a change in temperature material will expand suppose if you are increasing the heat by 1 or 2 degree steel will increase of uh, 12 micron per 1 degree rise in temperature so 1 meter of steel so like that uh, uh, different material will behave differently your uh, complete machine tool is having a uh, made up of uh, so many elements so your uh, thermal expansion rate will be more and uh, that's why you are facing a component accuracy issue throughout the day